Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 beta 7. iOS 18.1 beta 7 is available to developers and iOS 18.1 public beta 4 should be out either by the time you're watching this video or the following day. Now this particular update came in at 570.4 megabytes on my iPhone 16 pro max was about the same size on the other devices, although a little bit bigger on the iPhone 11. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 18.1 Beta 7, WatchOS 11.1 Beta 5, tvOS and HomePodOS 18.1 Beta 5, and VisionOS 2.1 Beta 5. We didn't get a macOS 15.1 update just yet. Now this is available on all iOS 18 supported devices, so if you have any of those devices you should be able to install it, but let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then general, then about. As you can see, just like last week, we have an A at the end of the build number with build number 22B5075A. This should be the last build probably before the release candidate comes out, and we'll talk about more when to expect that a little bit later in the video. We don't have a modem update going from beta six to beta seven. So no change there. But as far as new features, well, one thing that I wanted to mention, if you didn't see the weekend follow-up video has Apple has actually added a significant feature in this version. If we go into settings, then we tap our name at the top. Then we go into sign in and security at the top under email and phone numbers. We now have the option to go into one of our current addresses or add an email or phone number. If we go into one of our addresses, we can now change this to a primary email address where we did didn't have that option before we can even change the email, but it says primary email address is used to receive emails from Apple. It is also visible to people you collaborate and share documents with using iCloud. So I think that's a great addition, something that many people have wanted for a long time. Another thing is if we go to another page here, you'll see that we have the clock widgets and nothing looks different here. However, many people have noticed that if you go to customize and go to tinted, they're now translucent. So if you're in the tinted section, they're translucent, but if you're using lighter dark mode, they haven't really changed at all. So that's something that's a little bit new. I don't think it's new with beta seven. Some people said it was, it looks like it's part of beta six. As far as new features, this is more of a refinement update for iOS 18.1 before we get the release candidate or the final public version. And that means we're not going to get a ton of new features. Basically it's going to lock down the features we have, and we could see a surprise feature with the RC as we've seen before. But as far as this update goes, it's not just about Apple intelligence. The main thing is phone call recording. So many people have wanted that. So if you don't have Apple intelligence, intelligence, maybe iPhone 11, for example, we can go in here. We'll go ahead and place a phone call. And on the iPhone 11, if we are in a phone call, we'll have the option in the upper left to record the phone call. So it says this call is being recorded. Now it's recording the phone call. It has to announce that there's no way around that unless they change it in the future, but basically that's a legal requirement. Once you're done or you stop the recording, it will then save it to notes. So if we hit end here, you'll see view saved call. If we go into it, we can go into the call itself and we even have transcriptions, even on non Apple intelligence devices. So this is coming to all devices. So I know some people were concerned that iOS 18.1 wouldn't bring new features to older devices, but it looks like it does. In addition to that, we'll also get the new Apple intelligence features, of course, on iPhone 15 pro 15 15 pro max and iPhone 16 devices, not on any of the older devices. And it will be available in the United States to start and probably around the world as time goes on, maybe by later this year, I've heard some people say in the UK by December, possibly China by December, but you can set your actual language to English and you should be able to try it out. So us English, and then you can try it out and then you get the new Siri animation. You'll get the new writing tools new suggestions and messages and updates with transcriptions and more. So that's something that's going to be coming out very soon with this update. Not everyone will get it. And it also includes some updates for control center. If we go into the control center, many of our new options here for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, airdrop, cellular data now have their own option here or an own widget. You don't have to actually have them in this stack. You can place them somewhere else, such as down here. So we can turn on Wi-Fi or turn it off and you'll see it's in the control center itself if you want that and you don't want the old look. Also, if we go into messages, we have the new emoji keyboard setup like we saw earlier in iOS 18 betas, but they're bringing it finally to iOS 18.1, it seems. So definitely an update there and much more. So lots to look forward to, even if you're not getting Apple intelligence. Now this time around, we did get some splash screens. I took some screenshots of them and the first one is in podcast. So there's a new splash screen there talking about precise sharing, faster search, more playback control. We also had one in books, or at least I had one on my device. 
Also in Apple TV talking about up next is now continue watching. And then you have the add to watch list option. We also have an update for voice memos, or at least a splash screen here that talks about stereo recording transcripts and save as, and also one in home where we have updates to control center accessories on watch and customized access for guests. So lots of different updates coming with iOS 18.1, lots of splash screens. I'm sure we'll see the first time you install it as well. As far as issues that are going on currently with it, well, the first one you may have already seen. If we go into messages here, go into the emoji keyboard, we go into our emoji here, they're missing in certain places. So here, if we go to my recents, you'll actually see that some emoji are missing. If I tap on them, it does nothing. So I actually tried to turn off the emoji keyboard, go back in. It looks like all the emoji work, just the recent ones sort of have gaps here where they're not filled in. Also in control center, I have this blue icon and I can delete it. I think it's part of music, but if I delete it now it goes away and it's no longer an issue. So for whatever reason that showed up, I'm not sure why, but now it's gone and it's not a problem, but definitely an odd thing is some people had issues with the hearing icon before that was fixed in beta six. As far as releases, well, iOS 18.0.2 could possibly be releasing soon. However, it looks like Apple may just wait until iOS 18.1. And according to what we've seen online so far, it looks like we could have one more release of iOS 18.1 as the RC is coming out probably on the 21st with a final release, most likely on the 28th. This is according to Mark Gurman, who said, the Apple's actually planning for the 28th for a release date. So probably this is the last beta. Then we'll have RC or release candidate, which is the final version. They just release earlier to developers and public beta testers. If everything's fine with that, that's the public release. And you just had it a little bit early. So many people have been asking, do I turn off the beta? Now the release candidate is the final version, unless there's an additional change, but then you'll just have another update. So that should hopefully be pretty stable by the time it comes out. And so far it seems to be pretty stable here. Of course, then after iOS 18.1, we'll move on to iOS 18.2 and hopefully we'll see Gen Moji and image playground. That's when it's rumored to be releasing. So we'll hopefully see that maybe the next day or the following week. As far as overall performance, well, it seems to be very smooth. Most people are actually saying it is quite smooth. And I noticed that on the iPhone 11 right away. So maybe on older devices, it will be nice and smooth. ProMotion seems to be nice and fast, at least on the 16 Pro Max. If we go over to the app library, we'll scroll down and you'll see 60 Hertz versus 120 Hertz, the smoothness, but in general, it seems to be pretty decent overall and performance of opening apps and just using it in general seems to be nice and fast. So this is a different app called Mercury, but either way, going into the weather app, it seems to be nice and fast on both devices. As far as the overall heat, well, the iPhone 16 pro max is a little bit warmer than it was before, letting me think that they're probably processing quite a few things in the background, but not hot to the touch, just a little bit warmer than basically ambient temperature. So no concerns there. So of course we'll test that more extensively on the weekend after we've used it for a few days. And the same goes for battery. It takes a few days to know what battery is like, but let's take a look at it. Now, my current battery health is 100% with 21 cycles. This is my main phone. And if we go to the last 10 days yesterday, I had three hours and 32 minutes of screen active time at two hours and eight minutes of screen idle time and used about 70% of the battery or so it's been getting me through the day. No problem. And I haven't had any issues with it today. I've had three hours and three minutes of screen active time and I'm down to 47%. However, I had an issue last night where the phone didn't charge with MagSafe. I had to reboot the phone. It still didn't charge, but it would charge on a Qi charger. I rebooted the charger, then it worked. So it could have been the charger itself, but it definitely had an odd issue there. And I've heard of some other odd issues that seem to creep up today. So hopefully this resolves that and I don't run into it. So it wasn't charged to hundred percent last night. In fact, you'll see it was charged to 51% 34 minutes ago. So in general, it has been getting me through the day. It lasted through the night, no problem and seems to be decent. But again, we'll have to check that on the weekend. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.1 beta seven or public beta four, well, if you have the previous one beta six or earlier, definitely install it, get updated to the latest version, see if it's fixed any of those issues. And if it hasn't report those in feedback. However, if you're on iOS 18.0.1, well, at this point, I would probably hold off since it's only a couple weeks away.
you could try it out, but there's still some things to know about it as far as overall stability and what it's like. So if you're on iOS 18.0.1 and you're enjoying it, you're getting decent battery life. I wouldn't upgrade to a beta just to try and get better battery life as typically it will go the other way around, but we'll have to wait and see again for the weekend follow-up to see what it's like. Now, as far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at those benchmarks completed. And on the iPhone 11, we have 1,752 for single core and 4,072 for multi-core. This is actually an improvement over the previous beta, as you can see here, at least with multi-core. And as far as the iPhone 16 pro max, well, I think it's processing quite a bit in the background. We have 3,464 for single core, 8,350 for multi-core. I ran it three different times and it's a little bit lower as far as the multi-core multi-core score, but it's higher as far as the single core score. So it could be processing something in the background, but overall the experience seems to be pretty good and it's within the margin of error. So no real issues there. Now, if you've found anything else new or a different experience than I've had on iOS 18.1 beta seven, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And we'll talk about the experience, new features, and more if there's more found a little bit later this week with the regular follow-up video. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.